I wanted to give an Augur security platform demo. Um, so I'm going to run through most of the key features that I would usually show in a demo to a customer. Um, see if you guys like them. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments um, or shoot me a message somehow. So what's the problem that Orca Security is actually trying to solve? Is uh, when it comes to cloud security platforms, a lot of them take a legacy approach of looking at agents to find information. So deploying agents on a machine, usually that means you need to bake it into a gold image or have someone full time trying to understand where the agents are, what they're seeing and um, how you can either improve that visibility or, or pull it back a little bit. The way that Orca gets installed is depends on which platform. So uh, from an AWS perspective, it's at an organizational level. Um, at an Azure uh, level, it's at, at this subscription level. So that means that every time someone adds a virtual machine to that subscription or any type of function to that subscription, uh, whether it be in any of those cloud platforms, on the next scan that Orca does, it can see the new things inside the cloud platform. What that means is you don't have to manage those um, agents anymore and it gets rid of a massive, massive problem that a lot of places have. So you can plug in all of those cloud platforms at the same time. So the AWS platform, Oracle, Google Cloud, um, Azure, and when it does its scan, it will do it across all of those platforms at one time. What we're looking at at the moment is the dashboard. Now, dashboards typically in most platforms kind of just a, a thing that exists, they're kind of a landing page. Um, but Orca does a really good job of tying some meaningful data into here and you can actually customize this. So uh, if you're more interested in vulnerability management or if you're more interested in data, depending on what your role is, you can customize this dashboard to do different things and you can click and drag any of these icons around and save them. I think that the really helpful or insightful um, dashboard icon that you can use is the news here. So if there's a new CVE that drops um, or something that's happening in your environment, such as this buffer overflow, you actually get the news feed telling you whether or not you're affected by this and it will give it to you from an alert perspective. When you're looking at Orca alerts or a piece of inventory, I think the coolest thing is you can break it up between the two. So you can either go and look at an asset and see all of the alerts associated with it, or you can go see an alert and see the assets that have that alert. So you can see um, two different ways. This helps for infrastructure people to understand alerts. This also helps for threat hunters to sort of break down the information a little bit better and understand the, the risk across the environments. And you can do that by clicking on the alerts function here and just simply going to the alerts. Now the alerts are broken down into different categories. What you might find is um, that Orca is actually laying over its own version of risk on top of this platform. So um, we have a critical alert here and you might find that an asset with a critical alert might have the same problem as an asset that's not a critical alert. So if I break that down, Let's say we have a virtual machine, uh, two virtual machines, and they're both suffering from the same CVE. Orca might say that one of those is critical and one of those is not. And the reason it's doing that is because it's deriving context from the rest of the environment. So one of those assets might be connected to the internet uh, and connected to a piece of data. So Orca says, okay, that's a high risk asset. Whereas the other asset, uh, maybe it's off or maybe um, it's not connected to any of those data sources. That means it will bring it lower down in those categories. So it's really helping you decide what you should identify and fix first. And once you've identified and fixed those problems, on the next scan, Orc will realize that you've either um, solved those problems or keep them in the tray. So let's have a look at some of these alerts. In the critical items, we have malware, suspicious activity, and vulnerabilities. And when we have a look at the vulnerabilities, we get a nice breakdown of an infected virtual machine with critical vulnerability containing potentially sensitive data. We can see that it was last seen three days ago and discovered five months ago. That means that no one has resolved this alert and Orca is still seeing this uh, three days ago, but the first time it saw it was five months ago. We can see the actual asset here, so you don't have to go figuring out which asset it is. And you can see the account that it's associated with. Because Orca is looking across all of your cloud accounts, you don't have to worry about going and figuring out, you know, which subscription is this in, which account is this in. Orca is going to give you that information so that you can go ahead and do that straight away. I'm just going to close this up and we'll choose another one. So let's have a look at malware. 
It's broken it down into different categories once again. Uh, I'm going to go virtual machine and we'll just take a look at these seven virtual machines. So once again, we can see the last seen and the discovered. So we can see these are spread across a lot of different time and they're also spread across different machines. Now, this would be a really cool example to, to go through. We have the same virtual machine uh, in the same account. And when we click on that virtual machine, we'll actually now be able to see the alerts associated with the assets instead of the, uh, we'll be able to see all of the alerts associated with the assets instead of just looking at the alerts themselves. We get some cool information. So it says it's an EC2 instance, it gives us its name, tells us it's running. It is publicly accessible and it has quite a lot of vulnerabilities on it. These vulnerabilities are broken down once again from that critical high medium. And we can even get a graph um, showing us how it's connected to things. So uh, we have an EC2 security group here that we can see the port ranges and the source IPs and destination IPs. We can see that it's connected to the public address and there's a bunch of different roles um, that are attached to being able to uh, either have access to this machine or view this machine or make changes on it you can see there's little numbers associated here 49 52 and 5. you can click on those and break those down a bit further i'm not going to at this stage because we are configured um, at the level that orca is the additional information that's provided for any of these assets is quite incredible. So we can see all of this information where we need to. And it's all associated and derived from the cloud itself. If I go risk, uh, we can actually see a breakdown of those alerts a little bit better. So we can, we can see that more information. Um, and you can see things like their status and if tickets are um, proceeded with it. Because we can set up these nice workflows. So... Now that we've taken a look at alerts, um, let's go and have a look at it from a inventory point of view. So it's really, really hard to keep track of all of your assets, especially in a cloud environment. People who are working in the cloud environment, whether they're infrastructure engineers or DevOps engineers, I know things go through approvals, but sometimes people will spin things up without permission and it's really, really hard to keep track of any of those. Having the ability to sort through your storage assets, your compute assets, your network configurations, all in one place is a really, really handy and powerful thing that you can simply just log into the portal and do a search. So you could search for a type of compute service. So whether it's just a virtual instance itself, you could do it from an image instance or even an identity instance. If you wanna see a specific user or group and how their configurations are done. Um, if you wanted to quickly type in something into this search bar, it will show you any of the assets that are associated with um, what you've just typed in. And we can see um, that's the asset that I was looking at just before. If you wanted to break it down and say, okay, this user should only be looking at Azure assets, we can simply click on Azure um, and get the ability to, to view them in isolation. Now, Orca is looking at your cloud environment in a few different ways. So we have security views, which sort of break down those views. I'm not gonna click on all of these during this session. I'm just gonna click on what I think are the important ones and the cool ones to show. Um, but if you guys sign on and, and wanna do a risk assessment, then we're more than happy to show you the rest. So API security, this is pretty straightforward. I will go into here. Um, it's basically just showing you what's happening with your APIs within your environment. Attack paths. Now, this has become a little bit more popular over the last few years. An attack path is basically a pathway that an attacker can use to get inside your organization. So the steps that they would take to compromise a system and potentially exploit something or get to a data source or something important, potentially a crown jewel. We have cloud detection and response. So the ability to detect things like your cloud trail logs, um, and understand whether there's a problem going on in real time. Vulnerabilities. So this is a classic. You can see CVEs here, your risks associated with your environment. Data security posture management, which is the ability to, um, sorry, see uh, your data within your environment itself. And finally, we have Keem, which is cloud infrastructure entitlement management.
uh, which has to do with identity. So Orca is not just looking at one thing in isolation. It's not just a typical agent-based solution that's going to show you vulnerabilities um, that you have to deploy everywhere. You simply just plug it into your cloud environments and you get all of these features uh, within, within it. Let's start with API security. So each one of these, um, let's say verticals, has its own dashboard that's built by Orca itself to understand and identify any of the risks that are in here. So we have the top API addresses at risk. We have the top addresses in general. We can see exposure levels, IP addresses based on geography and alerts. Once again, I can see those assets. So we get a list of any of the APIs, whether that's a IP address, a domain, a subdomain, and we can see which account they're associated with. If you just simply need this information because this is hard to come by. A lot of people don't have an inventory of these types of assets, especially in their cloud environment. And it has been related to potential breaches in the past uh, that have been newsworthy, where APIs are causing problems because data is being extracted. People don't realize they're there and they don't realize the sources that they're connected to. So if we take uh, this as an example, we can quickly, quickly click on this asset and we can see the risk score associated with it, as well as a graph, which is super powerful. Being able to quickly understand the domain is connected to uh, a URL that has bucket inside of it. It's a TCP connection with a HTTP path and a get operation. So potentially people can get information from this source. And Orca even gives you the privilege of understanding and seeing what happens at this endpoint if you visit it. Like I've already said, Orca likes breaking things down from an asset perspective, but also from an alert perspective. So if you just want to isolate these APIs and understand those alerts associated with them, you can quickly go and see the alerts themselves. Now, I'm not going to go into any of these at the moment um, in the essence of time, but once again, really happy to plug this into your own environment um, and show you what it can do. Once again, attack paths, they've become a lot more prominent within you know, the last few years. I think that they're a really, really helpful way to understand um, and visualize how an attack might occur. And these really should be something that you focus on uh, once you find out that they're there. Once you know that an attacker can exploit something and get to a crown jewel or a data source potentially, that's something that you really want to focus on. Sure, there's alerts, things like CVEs and malware, but when you're putting them into the direct context that Orca provides you to understand what that path looks like, it's very important that you take a look at it straight away. So we have some high impact ones. Um, of course, the most fun ones are always data sources like buckets or databases. So I'm just going to choose one of these. We have uh, AWS exposed buckets, data with personal identifiable information inside of it. And when you keep drilling down, we keep finding out more information. So let's click on one of these attack paths and Orca will take us there so that we can fully understand what's happening. What we can see here is uh, the internet is directly connected to what looks like a developer machine. If we highlight on it, we can see that extra information. We can see that it has a service vulnerability that's related to this machine. And it also has sensitive AWS keys on the system. And what Orca is pointing out here is that you can actually exploit this service vulnerability from the internet. The system has the sensitive keys on it, which then can be used uh, for S3 read-only uh, bucket access to this demo bucket that we have here. That demo bucket then has PII on it. So already, very quickly, we can see, okay, what do we need to remediate to ensure that this machine can't be exploited to reach the bucket? Or you might even be asking yourselves questions, why is a dev machine publicly exposed to the internet? Why is there PII sources within our dev environment? Should that even exist? Orca likes to really spell it out to you. So we have the attack story here. So it, um, instead of just looking at the graph, we can read about the story. 
um, and we have the attack path timeline. So that's just telling you if people have changed configurations. Another security view that I think is really, really important um, is simply vulnerabilities. Now, vulnerabilities seem like they're just something everyone knows about now and they're not that important. But the reason I like all cover vulnerabilities is just that level of context that I was talking about at the start. So we have two machines, they might have the same vulnerability, maybe one's connected to a data source and one's not connected to a data source. So Orca might rate those differently based on that context because the impact of an exploitation on that machine is larger for the organization. So it becomes a critical alert instead of just a high or a medium. So we can see uh, vulnerabilities with exploitation and fixes. So with exploitation and without a fix, these would be machines that you want to focus on and put different controls around them if you can't actually fix them. Whereas with the fixes, these should always be low numbers because you should be able to go away um, if they have an exploit and patch those machines where possible. We have vulnerability ages. So if you've got some really old vulnerabilities associated with devices um, and their high scores, you might want to go and fix those too. And CVSS scores, right? Common CVEs. All of this information is super useful for infrastructure teams and security teams alike. We scroll down once again, we can see CVEs. So if you wanted to do it um, based on the alert itself, or we can do it based on the asset. Once again, going to keep harping on about this. It's one of the best core features, I think, of Orca security is just simply being able to break things down by assets and by alerts um, so that you can determine which is the most critical to fix first. We can see all of the accounts, including this Oracle account with virtual instances, um, and you can go away and remediate these. Now, a really, really common theme that I've seen across a lot of customers is a level of compliance that needs to be associated. Um, in Australia, obviously, it's the Essential 8. And Orca has uh, the ability to um, determine if you're compliant based on a control very quickly. So I've plugged in the Essential 8 Maturity Level 3 model. I'm just going to click on it. What that does is goes through all of the controls in Essential 8 and tells you if you've passed or failed them. So you get a really quick audit for these cloud environments very quickly. So if we go to uh, patch operating systems, for example, we can see uh, patch updates, vendor mitigations, and security vulnerabilities in operation systems, workstations, yada, yada, yada. You have to patch these within two weeks of release or within 48 hours if an exploit exists. You can now determine if you pass or fail any of these controls very, very quickly. If you follow NIST or you follow CIS, um, ISO certification, there are lots of different compliant levels that Orca looks at. Now, I know I didn't go through um, data management or identity. Um, Orca also has the ability to create some automations if you need to. And the shift left, um, let's just click on that one. So shift left, uh, he's talking about code integrity and image scanning integrity. So before you actually deploy something into your cloud environment, Orca Security can do a scan on your GitHub or GitLab, wherever you're storing your repos, and it will tell you if you're following the best practice, if you have misconfigurations, um, if you're going to expose data before you do that deployment. It's a really great way to understand what vulnerabilities are there before you action them. If you guys have any questions, um, you can shoot me a message. There's gonna be multiple ways you can do that. I'm on LinkedIn, you can chase me up there. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I enjoyed speaking to you. Thank you.